Good evening. What's going on? Today, we are going to talk about food myths, health myths. Debunked. We're going to debunk them. Things that have been around for a while that aren't true. That's what we're going to go over today. So we just have a couple common ones. Common ones we've come into encounter with, with people, and then also just things society thinks is right, but yeah. it doesn't really matter. Um, so the first one we're going to go over is can you eat after dinner? You know how your mom would be like, no snacks after dinner, kids. <laughs> You're like, oh, come on, mom, I'm hungry. <laughs> well, it's probably because it <laughs> uh, for me, you wanted cookies or something, <laughs> which you shouldn't. That's not what you should have. <laughs> but. Um, yeah, I was raised the same way. After yeah. dinner, it was like, you're done. No more yep. food, really, Eat afterwards. Your dinner. Yep. Uh, so the answer is that's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Straight to the point. But we Straight grow shooter. up thinking that you can't eat after dinner because of how we're raised most of the time. But what we wanted after dinner is a dessert, right? So you wanted mm-hmm. a high mm. carb, a cookie. Or cookies and milk before bed. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Cereal. Um, that's still a big one for some of my adult clients, <laughs> but it's all about making the right choices around bedtime. So I don't know if you want to go into that at all, or if you want me to keep So talking. basically the general rule that I have for people is I've said this plenty of times already, but if you missed it, carbs are fuel. They are what your body uses. It's, it's like the oil in your car. So I always tell people, keep your, you know, you need your fuel. Um, most of the day, like mid morning, afternoon, mid afternoon, that's when you're at work, you're doing your hustle and bustle and that's when you need your carbs. So when it comes to like after dinner time on, you really shouldn't be taking in a majority of your carbs Mm -hmm. earlier throughout the day. That's when you should be using your carbohydrates and taking those in after that. If you're going to have anything before bed, it needs to be fat or protein. It doesn't need to be a carbohydrate source at all because Mm -hmm. you're going to go to bed. You're not using it. It's pointless. Right. Yep. Yeah. So I had a question about, since I suggested level one um, protein ice cream before bed, which is literally just protein water ice, blend it together, that, voila, there you go. Um, they were confused. Like, wait, I'm, I can eat after dinner? Of course you can. Especially, like, if you're doing macro counting, which, or just, like, portion sizes, like, I guarantee you, you can take in more protein. Um mm-hmm. Pretty much guaranteed. And even fat. So, like, if you want to munch on something, dark chocolate almonds, um, something like that, you know, um, something that's crunchy. Because I know people want the crunch at night. Or just finding a better substitute of a cereal, um, which we talked about. I think, uh, Tracy, you just got some of that cereal in, that protein cereal in. So, that's one thing in our group page that's been going around. So, it's all about swapping out the... Chocolate yeah. chip Nestle uh, cookies. Yeah, I was going to say, I'll give you a classic example. I eat something before bed every single night. And literally, and you do too. So mm-hmm. literally what we do is we make these mug cakes, which I think we've told you guys about it. It's level one, usually with an egg. Mm-hmm. Um, I put olive oil in it. I'm the one that makes it, so. <laughs> I eat it. I do a scoop of <laughs> level one, um, a tablespoon of olive oil, a little bit of water, um, and then a little bit of baking soda. Yeah, and that's, that's literally all it is. Literally mm-hmm. every single night. And the reason I take in level one is because it's slower digesting protein, which is essential because you're about to go to sleep. You're going to be down for six to eight hours or however long. You're not going to be utilizing anything. So you need that protein di- to digest throughout that long span of sleeping. Because you're, fa- you're going into fasting. Your body's just trying to... Correct, correct. So you don't want it to absorb quickly. You want it to stay in there to fuel your body throughout mm-hmm. that tire sleeping yeah so that is number one eating after dinner is okay as long as you eat the right things Mm -hmm. number two eating egg yolks will make you have high cholesterol so back in the day pretty much so is that true or false it's false oh okay it's false so dietary cholesterol so what you consume um is different than how than what your body that makes sense yeah that's rough enough yeah. So your physiological response to eating cholesterol isn't, oh, I'm just going to give you a bunch of bad cholesterol because you're eating cholesterol. Mm-hmm. That's not true. Mm-hmm. Um, 
there's other factors that can attribute to high cholesterol. And actually studies have shown that back in the day they thought the yolk, it contained a lot of bad, it contained cholesterol, which supposedly raised your cholesterol, but they've recently found that it actually contains a lot of beneficial nutrients and it contains a lot of Mm omega-3s, which actually helps to lower heart disease and cholesterol. So they've actually shown that the yolk has many benefits to it, which makes it very beneficial to not stay away from. So big, big myth. Yeah. So that's a pretty simple one. Which is why we buy boxes of eggs every single week. And how many eggs do I use? A lot. A lot. We eat a lot of eggs. But we do do egg whites too. Like we... Mm-hmm. To get the enough protein mm-hmm. without going overboard on the fat, because there's a lot of fat in the yolk. That's, so. Yeah, you got to be aware of that. You know, a lot of protein, a lot of fat, though. Okay, this is perfect because this le- leads us into our next myth: fat will make you fat. So eating fat will make you fat. That's that's false. All these mm. are false. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe not. All these are myths. Know. Some um, might be true later on. So, just like we said with the egg yolk, if you eat, you know, two eggs for breakfast, 12 grams of protein, you're not going to get fat from eating that. It's other things that are making you fat if you're fat. Like, Mm -hmm. it's just the truth. Um, You know, I was eating two full eggs, but then I was having gluten-free Czech cereal and all this other chips. Like, I was eating all this other stuff. I was chunky. From eating that stuff, not from the egg yolks, not from the fat and the mm. egg. Yeah, as I say, again, that's an old school kind of thinking that a really high fat would put on fat on your body. That's not the case. Um, recent studies, again, have shown out shown that people that increase their fat intake actually decrease their body fat. Yeah. So, so there are good and bad fats, though. So omega-3s are great fats. Um, omega-3s are in nuts and seeds. They're in, like avocados, fish, fish um, uh, yeah, wild eggs. caught fish, eggs, um, grass-fed beef, grass-fed butter, those kind of things. Um, it's higher, you know, you want to get those. So that also explains into that grass-fed thing. If you're ever wondering why you're in the store and why do people make such a big deal about the grass-fed thing, that's why. Because mm-hmm. grass-fed animals, actually, their meat contains more omega-3s than mm-hmm. non-grass-fed animals. So that's why people make a big deal about yeah. it. So if you think about what the animal is consuming or the environment that they're in. Or raised, yep. That, what they're consuming, just like us, builds up in their body and that's mm-hmm. then what we consume. Mm-hmm. So that goes with, you know, eggs as well. Uh, farm-raised, cage-free eggs. I know Sierra is watching, so, like, I'm trying to give more, like, vegetarian things. Um, Those are going to have richer nutrients than just buying normal eggs. Uh, But I know it's hard, and it is more expensive to get those kind of eggs. So, but you know, though, now you know, kind of thing. I'm just letting you guys know. I was going to say, a lot of times, the American diet contains a lot of omega-6s, which is a different fat, and it's more pro-inflammatory, so it's going to... um, Increase inflammation, whereas the omega threes or anti are anti-inflammatory, and you're also going to be getting those in like fish oil pills. And if you're taking the microfactor, it has EFA in it and like things like that. So, anyone have any questions? Let us know. We got a couple people watching. So, I've uh, Stacy, Sierra, Jessica. If you guys have any questions or want to chime in on anything that you guys know, please do so. I'm not sure if we can see comments though right now. <laughs> I should get my computer out. I guess uh, it's okay. Okay, last one that we have. Eating less will help you lose weight. Oh. Boss. <laughs> so, although eating less food at first, you, you'll you lose weight. You will. I mean, you're restricting your calories. Your calories... At are, first, yeah. Yeah. Your calories are deficient compared to... What you're using. Yeah, what you're using. So, you're going to lose weight. But as time continues... You're going to ruin your metabolism, and you're going to screw up your hormones, and then you start gaining weight. So that's what ends up happening to people. Yeah, so basically what happens is when you start to restrict your eating, it slows down your metabolism. And you don't want that because what happens is you kind of put your body in a starvation mode. But your body is naturally designed and made to do this. So when you start to restrict food, your body's like, okay, I get it. I need to retain 
in case I need that energy later, which your body's like, I want to live, so I need that energy later. So it will slow down the metabolism. It's not going to burn things as quickly and efficiently because it's trying to retain it on purpose. So when you eat less and less, you're just training your body to do that, which in the wild, that's what it's meant to do. So by slowing your metabolism, that's what's going to decrease your weight loss. And it's really going to be hurting you in the end. Mm -hmm. So, and then you know, what will happen is sometimes people even gain weight back from that and they're not knowing why, why you know, and it's because the metabolism is such in a flux, so mm -hmm. yeah. it can really hurt you. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was going to say something, but then you just, sorry, I don't need to say anything more. You explained it well. You explained it really good. Yeah. So I know some people, I've, uh, a lot of times I feel as though people are eating too less, like a restricted diet, mm -hmm. and so we try to implement more things in there. So um, when people tell me they feel like they're eating less, I still it's, it's I, a problem. I know that mm -hmm. you're not then doing exactly what I'm suggesting because you should feel like you're eating a lot of food mm -hmm. because you, you need a lot of food to boot your metabolism for and, your body to run off of things. Yeah, and so. we talked about that the one day, how many lives ago, that the research showed that if you're eating whole foods, it's actually taking more energy or more calories for your body to burn it. So you could actually, it required you to eat more whole food, which means you were eating more food throughout the day. So with Stacey, she said, so what if I hit my fat pro what if I hit my fat, protein, and carb goal for the day, but my calories are not even, um, and you don't feel like you're getting enough food, then that's that's a problem and we need to reevaluate what mm -hmm. you're eating and really, 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 really break it down. Mm -hmm. And if you feel like your calories are restricted, well, then your macros probably are restricted and something's off. Mm -hmm. So something's not adding up that we need to take a look at, mm -hmm. but that also then entails and I'm not just like pinpointing you Stacy that also entails you being honest with us with what you're really eating and if you are measuring your foods and if you really do understand macros um and it's like tall tale true and the my fitness pal logs right because sometimes my fitness pal can not be right yeah like we really would have to dig in and make sure because if you're not feeling good on what you're doing it it's wrong like we need to fix it mm -hmm. so that would be my big thing is we just need to dive in deeper and totally Stacey if you feel like that's something we need to work on we can do that be perfect thank you I've been doing it a lot because I need more energy right now <laughs> it's been a long day um okay so we're just going to go then into eating less doesn't mean you're going to lose more weight over time it's actually detrimental to the body um so we wanted them to feed into that, which we kind of touched on it, into just eating quality food. Um, a lot of times we talk about wheat and dairy, how that tends to bloat people, um, and there's a reason for that. And that goes back to the quality of the food. So we, I, I could go on about it, so I'm going to try to keep it simple. Wheat has been genetically modified over a long period of time. So much so, and it hasn't been tested on humans or even, I don't even think on rats, um, the effect it has physiologically. It's genetically modified though. So when we consume it, wheat isn't what it used to be back in the day. So back in the day, we were farming, like hands-on farming, it was okay to eat. It's changed so much, your body can't even, and there's so many pesticides, your body can't even digest it properly. So that's why even with oatmeal, with certain people, we're like, watch out because it can be contamin contaminated with things in the factories. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, because honestly, it, it, it's hard to trust some of the factories. You don't really know what's con getting contaminated, contaminated with what, and sometimes it's just easier not to take the uh, risk on that. Yeah. Uh, but it goes back to what we said how many lives ago – kind of rounding it up with what, when, and how. So you need to make sure to look at what is inside what you're eating. So the ingredients label, um, basically the ingredients. And then how much are you consuming, which has to do with the macros, you know, how much you're consuming throughout the day. And then when. So that means like the timing of things. Mm -hmm. So what we talked about earlier of after dinner, it's really pointless to take in a huge amount of carbs. It does your body no good. Um, I'm trying to think of another example 
or new uh, timing of you know taking oh. that carb mm-hmm. fast digesting carb fast digesting protein right after your workout yeah, or what I said it. before slow digesting protein before bed mm-hmm. there's a difference between that so what when and how you always it's those three factors pretty much on everything right yep and I guess my point of uh, bringing all that Derek just rounded it up so nicely is well because okay because we don't want to tell you guys not to eat certain foods. We just want you to be aware of how the food industry is, and we're not crazy. Um, and some people might be able to have dairy, mm-hmm. and some people might not be able to have dairy. Like, I can't. I I mean, I can, but I feel like crap when I do. Mm-hmm. And this has been going on for as long as I can remember looking back in my life. So I know I can't. But if you're looking to get rid of your pooch and – you still want to have cow's milk like dairy that's fine just know it's going to be harder to get rid of your pooch because it does tend to blow so like it might not have adverse effects on you like it does me but it still has tendencies to do certain things to the body so that's why we wanted to round that off like derek said always look at the back label of the ingredients not the front that says high protein no fat blah 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 because there's they're probably lying to you look at the ingredients just because it says gluten-free doesn't mean it's good Look at the ingredients. Look at the macros. Look at them. And, and two, this goes to a personal thing, is you can't trust what the box always says. Because in the end, you know what it's about? It's about this right here. It's about money. And that's just the reality of it. So you always need to make sure you're looking out for your health, for you. You have to take control of it. And you have to know this is for me. Not for them, and I'm not going to believe everything that it says because in the end, this sounds bad, but they don't really care what happens to you. You need to care what happens mm-hmm. to you. That's just reality. So please take that and with intention and, and look that you're eating the right things yeah, and all that stuff. Exactly. So just to sum it up, we, I know we have some people here at the end. We're just gonna, we went over some myths. The four myths, I'm just going to go over, and they're all false. Eating after dinner you're not allowed to do that. That's false. You can just do the right foods. Number two, eating egg yolks will make your cholesterol high. False. Not true. Fat, eating fat will make you fat. False. Eating less will mean more weight loss. False. 